sad, sad, sad. Namo Buddhaya. Meritorious lay followers. Now we are going to learn a very important sutta preached by the Gautama Supreme Buddha. So I have selected this sutta from the numerical discourses of the Buddha, Anguttara Nikaya, and we know there are several chapters or collections of the numerical discourses. So, this sutta is from the chapter of the age. Meritorious disciples, we have been very fortunate to go for refuge to an extraordinary teacher. In this world, the opportunity to hear even the word, the Buddha, is very rare. Since the most valuable thing and the rarest thing is the appearance of a fully enlightened Buddha in this world. Many people do not get an opportunity to understand the true nature of this world. As a result, majority of people are destined to be born in bad worlds such as hell, animal world, ghost world and asura world. When we learn the teachings of the Supreme Buddha, we can understand how our actions, bodily actions, verbal actions and mental actions affect our happiness. Happiness in this present life and happiness in future lives. Normally, we do not tend to pay attention to our actions. We do not know very easily how our actions generate happiness or unhappiness when we are motivated by desire, craving, greed, hatred, jealousy or many defilements like that. We use our body, speech and mind according to that defilement. Sometimes we will experience a temporary happiness when we use our body, speech and mind in a way that we enjoy 
things in this world. But in the long run, Supreme Buddha explains, we will have to suffer a lot. That is why it is very important to understand the difference between the actions that lead to temporary happiness and the actions that lead to lasting happiness. In terms of happiness, following the precepts plays a major role in the teachings of the Buddha. After one has gone for refuge to the triple gym, Supreme Buddha teaches the next step, the most important thing in this practice, the initial entrance to this path is following the precepts. So as lay people, male lay followers and female lay followers are supposed to follow five precepts. They have to abstain from killing beings, stealing, sexual misconduct, telling lies and taking intoxicating drinks and drugs. So in a daily basis, these five precepts should be followed. Apart from that practice of five precepts, Supreme Buddha has emphasized following the eight precepts for lay people. So in the time of the Buddha, it was very uh, common that the disciples of the lay disciples of the Supreme Buddha observed four times a month. They observed eight precepts four times a month. They have understood the significance of this training. So, now we are going to listen to that sutta about the explanation of the Supreme Buddha about the eight precepts and how Supreme Buddha encourages the Blessed One's disciples to follow the five precepts. Supreme Buddha teaches, when, O monks, the Uposatha observance is complete in eight factors, it is of great fruit and benefit, luminous and pervasive. Supreme Buddha explains, the Uposatha observance or the following of the eight precepts is of great fruit and benefit. That practice generates many happy results, many advantages and that practice is very beneficial. And how is the Uposatha observance complete in the eight factors which make it of great fruit and benefit? Luminous and pervasive. Now in this sutta, Supreme Buddha explains the most 
fruitful way of observing eight precepts. So we are very fortunate to have these discourses still available to us. Supreme Buddha teaches, here monks, a noble disciple reflects thus. So now it is very obvious that first of all one has to be a noble disciple. Arya Savaka. Because by understanding the danger of the ordinary life, Putujjana, one has to go for refuge to the triple gem. And thereafter, they are uh, no longer called ordinary people, they are called noble disciples. So, once one goes for refuge to the triple gem, he or she gets a great opportunity to follow the rest of the path. So, the eight precepts represent a very important progress of this path. So, Supreme Buddha, that is why Supreme Buddha explains, a noble disciple reflects thus before observing the first precept. As long as they live, the Arahants abandon the destruction of life and abstain from it. As long as they live, the Arahants do not kill humans or animals. They live with the rod and weapon laid aside. They are very kind and dwell compassionate toward all living beings. So, a lay follower reflects on the compassion of great Arahants and how they spread loving kindness, pity to all beings. And then, he or she further reflects, today I too for this day and night will do likewise. I will imitate the Arahants in this respect and the Uposatha observance will be fulfilled by me. This is the first factor it possesses. So now, Supreme Buddha has explained the importance of observing the first precept of these eight precepts. By learning the very first factor of eight precepts, we can understand very clearly the main purpose of observing eight precepts. What is that purpose? It is to imitate the lives of great Arahants. Why do lay people imitate the Arahants? Arahants are the noble ones who have liberated from this round of birth and death. They are the fortunate beings who achieve the true happiness by realizing the Four Noble Truths. They have completed the aggregate of virtue 
as explained by the Buddha. So, for their whole lifetime, uh, before becoming an Arahant or after becoming an Arahant, they kept these precepts very well. Even for, their, for the sake of their life, they didn't break these precepts. And that pure virtue enabled them to purify their minds completely from defilements. Their virtue helped them to develop concentration. It helped them to lead a life that was freed from regret and remorse and that same virtue helped them to develop their wisdom. That is why virtue is called the foundation of this excellent practice. So, If Arahants could achieve liberation through the practice of virtue and if that pra uh, virtue has helped them to follow the path, in the case of lay people, they also have the opportunity to achieve liberation by following that same virtue. But here Supreme Mother recommends as lay people they can dedicate to this practice at least four times a month in the four phases of moon. That's how they followed in the time of the Buddha. So in order to imitate the virtue of Arahants, lay disciples of the Buddha observe the first precept that is abstaining from killing beings. Supreme Buddha explains further Further, a noble disciple reflects, as long as they live, the Arahants abandon stealing and abstain from stealing. They accept only what is given, expect only what is given and dwell with honest hearts devoid of theft. Today I too, for this day and night, will do likewise. I will imitate the Arahans in this respect and the Uposatha observance will be fulfilled by me. This is the second factor it possesses. So here Supreme Buddha explains about the second precept. So there is another significant statement here. Supreme Buddha explains that a noble disciple observes these precepts with the intention of keeping them for a whole day. That's why one reflects today I too for this day and night. That means uh, entire day. So, in the second precept, a uh, lay follower tries to imitate the honest life of Arahants. 
imitating their purity, how they accepted only what was given. Then Supreme explains about the third precept. As long as they live, the Arahans abandon in celibacy and live the celibate life remote from sexuality, refraining from the coarse practice of sexual intercourse. Today I too, for this day and night, will do likewise. I will imitate the Arahants in this respect, and the Uposat observance will be fulfilled by me. This is the third factor it possesses. Now, again this is a very precious opportunity for lay people to imitate the pure lives of Arahants. Normally, lay people are supposed to observe the precept of abstaining from sexual misconduct as mentioned in the five precepts, but here they develop their virtue further because this is the day that they are uh, they imitate the pure lives of Arahants. So very happily they can uh, follow these precepts. Because in this world now we know very clearly many children are suffering due to the bad conduct of their parents. We can see that in uh, almost in every society. So, it is not it is because of not keeping the third precept of five precepts. But those parents who observe these precepts are going to give happiness for sure to their children. And at the same time, they are intensifying their practice towards the ultimate goal, Nibbana. Again Supreme Buddha explains, as long as they live, the Arahants abandon false speech and abstain from it. They are speakers of truth, adherents of truth, trustworthy and reliable, nor deceivers of the world. So with that understanding, a uh, noble disciple reflects, today I too, for this day and night, will do likewise. I will abstain from telling lies and speak only truth. I will imitate the Arahants in this respect and the Uposatha observance will be fulfilled by me. Now we can understand very clearly, if someone wants to imitate the lives of Arahants with this rare practice of observing eight precepts, one should know the importance of being an Arahant first. Why, why should one become an Arahant? One has to understand that thing very clearly. Because 
So Prem Buddha teaches, we have been suffering a lot in this cycle of birth and death, in this samsara. We should try to stop this cycle. In order to stop this cycle, one should purify one's mind completely from defilements. Arahants are the only disciples who get this opportunity by purifying their minds completely they escape from this cycle. That is why we also should imitate the lives of Arahants. We should understand very clearly that because of not having that opportunity to be liberated, to be Arahants, we we are wandering in this sansara. So the only solution is achieving Nibbana. That is why we should imitate the lives of Arahants. So Supreme Buddha explains the next precept. A noble disciple reflects further as long as they live, the Arahants abandon wines, liquors and intoxicants, which are the basis of negligence and abstain from them. So, Arahants never used intoxicants. They were very mindful. they enjoyed the bliss of clear comprehension and awareness. Today I too for this day and night will do likewise. I will imitate the Arahants in this respect and the opposite observance will be fulfilled by me. This is the fifth factor it possesses. So here, a noble disciple abstains from taking intoxicating drinks and drugs. This is also very important. In this world, now we can hear very often lots of disputes, problems arise due to this problem because of using intoxicants. When somebody uses intoxicating drinks or drugs, they tend to lose their mindfulness. As a result of losing mindfulness, one is in danger of breaking all the precepts which will result in unhappiness for oneself and others. And we know how lots of children are suffering in this world because their parents take intoxicants. They are very helpless. So 
So it is very important to follow these precepts. And especially noble disciples have to be very mindful because they have to practice more things in this excellent training. They have to practice meditation and lots of contemplations, reflections. They have to focus their mindfulness on the words of the Supreme Buddha. So always they have to be alert and careful. Then Supreme Buddha explains the sixth precept. As long as they live, the Arahants eat only once a day and refrain from eating at night from untimely meals. Today I too, for this day and night, will do likewise. I will imitate the Arahants in this respect and the Uposatha observance will be fulfilled by me. So here, we can learn a new precept. Even lay people get an opportunity to control their eating habits by imitating the simple restrained lives of Arahants. So this precept is followed by all the monastics of the Supreme Buddha and that practice enables them to have a very energetic, strong body which uh, helps them for their meditation practice. And also lay people have to be very mindful that day not to eat after 12 o'clock as we uh, follow that precepts nowadays. So we can place confidence in the knowledge of the Supreme Buddha and how the Blessed One uh, introduced these precepts as the factors of the path. Then Supreme Buddha explains, a noble disciple reflects further, as long as they live, the Arahants abstain from dancing, singing, instrumental music and unsuitable shows and from adorning themselves by wearing garlands and applying scents and ointments. Today I too for this day and night will do likewise. I will imitate the Arahants in this respect and the Uposat observance will be fulfilled by me. So this is the seventh factor it possesses. So again, lay people get an opportunity to imitate the renunciation, the bliss, bliss of renunciation that Arahants experience for their whole lifetime. The simplicity of the lives of Arahants. Normally, in the ordinary world, people try to gratify themselves engaging in various activities. 
because they don't know about that true happiness which surpasses the material things, which surpasses the ordinary happiness. But as the disciples of the Supreme Buddha, they know about the bliss of virtue, happiness of concentration that they experience and the happiness of association of good friends, Kalyanamitas, happiness they experience while they are practicing generosity and the happiness of a mind that is freed from hatred, greed and delusion and happiness of a developed mind, wisdom and insight. The happiness that the disciples experience when they understand the true nature of this life. So, Supreme Buddha has explained many other ways of gaining happiness. So the noble disciples are very fortunate to learn about these other ways apart from ordinary happiness. That is why they are eager to imitate the simplicity of the lives of Arahants. So they observe the seventh precept. And finally, Supreme Buddha explains, a noble disciple reflects further, as long as they live, the Arahants abandon the use of high and luxurious beds and seats and abstain from them. They make use of a low resting place, either a small bed or a straw mat. Today I too, for this day and night, will do likewise. I will imitate the Arahans in this respect. Again, we can see how a noble disciple uses this precious opportunity to imitate the simplicity of the lives of Arahans. Actually, Supreme Buddha has explained that if a disciple experiences the happiness of meditation, happiness of jhanas, he or she can experience a greater happiness by sleeping under a tree on a mat or sleeping on a low bed, that happiness will surpass the happiness of a householder who uses very comfortable, luxurious beds, pillows, and other comfortable things. So this is a very good opportunity for the disciples to experience the truth of the words of the Supreme Buddha. So very happily they tend to observe these precepts. So this is the eighth factor it possesses. Supreme Buddha teaches further, when monks, the opposite observance is complete in these eight factors, it is of great fruit and benefit, luminous and pervasive. And to what extent is it of great fruit and benefit, luminous and pervasive? Now Supreme Buddha is going to explain about the benefits 
and advantages of following the eight precepts in this way, imitating the great arahants. So, Supreme Buddha did not just say, okay, you observe eight precepts and you will have great benefits. The Blessed One with extraordinary knowledge explains the results and benefits as well. Suppose monks, someone were to exercise sovereignty and rulership over these 16 great states abounding in the seven precious treasures that is Anga, Magadha, Kasi, Kosala, the Vajis, the Mallas, the Chetis, Vansa, the Kurus, the Panchalas, Macha, Surasena, Asaka, Avanti, Gandhar and Kambuj. So, these are the uh, 16 states that were in the time of the Buddha, that India, the, the continent, Indian continent was divided into these 16 states. So, Supreme Buddha is explaining about the rulership and sovereignty over the Indian continent. This rulership with all the wonderful things, valuable things in this whole continent, this would not be worth the sixteenth part of the Uposatha observance complete in those eight factors. Supreme Dha explains, observing eight precepts gives more happy results than the rulership of Indian continent. For what reason? Because human kingship is poor compared to divine happiness. Okay, why did Supreme Buddha make this statement that this happiness of following eight precepts is better than the happiness of becoming a king over the whole India because the disciples who observe eight precepts are going to be reborn in heaven definitely. So they are going to experience divine happiness. That divine happiness surpasses human happiness. And then Supreme Buddha explains how that divine happiness is experienced by a noble disciple. Supreme Buddha explains the lifespans of those devas. So, Supreme Buddha teaches further, for the devas in the realm of the four great kings, Chatum Maharajika heaven, a single day and night is equivalent to 50 human years. Thirty such days make up a month and twelve such months make up a year. The lifespan of the devas in the realm of the four great kings is five hundred such celestial years. It is possible, monks, that if some man or woman here observes the Uposatha, complete in these eight factors, with the breakup of the body after death, they will be reborn in the company of the devas in the realm of the four great kings. It was with reference to this that I said human kingship is poor compared to celestial happiness. Now it is very clear why Supreme Buddha encouraged the lay disciples to observe the eight precepts. 
because they are going to experience divine happiness after death. This is not a very uh, minor thing or an insignificant thing because many humans will be reborn in bad worlds after death. So, Primudha has explained the reasons in many of the Blessed One's discourses. So, this birth, this rebirth in a heavenly world cannot be easily gained. This is a very difficult thing. So, in the same way, Supreme explains about the lifespans of other heavenly worlds. For the Tavatinsa Devas, a single day and night is equivalent to a hundred human years. The lifespan of the Tavatinsa Devas is a thousand such celestial years. The lifespan is increasing. When we go to the upper human, heavenly worlds, the, for the Yama Devas, a single day and night is equivalent to 200 human years. The lifespan of the Yama Devas is 2000 such celestial years. For the Tusita Devas, a single day and night is equivalent to 400 human years. The lifespan of the Tusita Devas is 4000 such celestial years. So, I will read the whole uh, explanation because it is very important to know the knowledge of the Supreme Buddha. The lifespan of the uh, Tavatisa Devas is 4000 such celestial years. For the Devas who delight in creation, Nimmanarati, a single day and night is equivalent to 800 human years. The lifespan of the Nimanarati Devas is 8000 such celestial years. For the Devas who control what is created by others, that is Paranimita heavenly world, a single day and night is equivalent to 1600 human years. 30 such days make up a month and 12 such months make up a year. The lifespan of the Devas of Nimman Rati is 16,000 such celestial years. And Supremuda explains further at the end, it is possible monks that if some man or woman here observes the Uposatha complete in these eight factors with the breakup of the body after death they will be reborn in the company of the Devas in the Paranimita Vasavati heavenly world. It was with reference to this that I said human kingship is poor compared to divine happiness. So, we listen to a complete sutta preached by the Supreme Buddha. So, we have been very fortunate to understand the importance of observing eight precepts and we learnt uh, the most beneficial way to observe the eight precepts and the benefits of observing eight precepts. Because of this excellent knowledge of the Supreme Buddha, we have got this opportunity to learn these things very clearly. So, I bless all of you May you also have the opportunity to observe eight precepts and follow the Noble Eightfold Path as explained by the Supreme Teacher. And may all of you attain Nibbana in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Namo Buddhaya.